one of the hardest things I've always experienced or witnessed is the actionable steps. The stage is where we get, we can plan, we can strategize, we can have all the theory in the world and all the flip chart papers with the ideas. But once it's time to take action and actually move forward is where a lot of us fall short. Community building and things of like that. Even organizations fall short, right? Uh, because that's the part that we can't see. And it takes a visionary to really see it and and create that navigational system for us to follow, right? And that's where leadership comes in, okay? This plan should be developed in, you know, collaboration with community members and should be based on the input and feedback that we get from those focus groups and the surveys. It only makes sense, right? It's also essential to engage and empower the members. And this is this is key, like, empowering somebody to believe they actually have a voice and they have an influence on a global, I mean, you know, within the economy, obviously, within the, 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 the community is what I mean. Um, to have that impact or that influence is crucial. Like that empowerment, that level of empowerment, it just puts them through the roof, which means they want to do more for the community, which means they want to contribute a lot more than they initially have thought they were going to, you know, um, be required to contribute. They will go above and beyond. OK, which means that we have to involve them in the planning, right? The implementation process of the initiatives and programs. Give them a reason to be invested. By allowing them to invest. Right. And I think. Those are the things that we need to consider when we're thinking about these things. Okay. Now, this can also involve creating opportunities for community members to participate in decision making, right? Actual decision making, not fluff. Providing resources and support for them to take on leadership roles within that, that community. Okay. So we have to now trust each other. Right. We have to trust that the other person we've, uh, you know, appointed in this role is going to have everyone's best interests, Right. At heart when they decide on things. I think another key thing is establishing, you know, a partnership. Uh, collaborations with organizations, businesses uh, and government agencies that can help leverage resources, expertise and can also increase the impact of community initiatives. So I'll give you an example of that. You might have a photographer. A lot of us don't value photographers, but they are no different than griots from, you know, um, older African cultures and traditions. Right. A griot was somebody who recorded information, the stories of, of a community or a village or a town so that the history is documented. That's essentially a photographer. They capture every moment throughout the stage. Someone who makes film, someone who's an artist, painting or telling the stories. It could be a storyteller, uh, someone who writes books. Um, and the reason why I'm stressing the arts is because often the arts are the ones that people neglect as if it doesn't have any purpose. But without art, none of our stories would ever be available for others to read the books that we write, the pictures that we look at, the, the novels and the graphic novels and all these paintings that we so value today is art. Everything around you is art. Again, don't let me go on this tangent because I know I can get lost in there. I'm passionate when it comes to arts because I am an artist and I value what art brings to our existence. So that's why I want to focus on the arts with that little stretch there. OK, but allow these individuals to leverage their resources, their expertise, tap into that. Right. So that we can, you know, have an impact, a greater impact on the initiatives that we create in, in the communities that we all have to, you know, appreciate and enjoy.